What's changed since we last spoke a year ago? A lot of things have changed and at the same time nothing has really changed. Uh, we still have a lot of refugees, there are still 624,000 registered, a little bit more than last year. What we're seeing is that refugees are getting more and more impoverished, more and more vulnerable because they've sold whatever they came with. And at the same time, the funding available to assist the refugees is decreasing. Uh, partly because this uh, crisis has been going on so long. What has changed for us as WFP much more is that we have now moved all the refugees onto a prepaid debit card so that they can now go shopping just like you or I do in the supermarket and pay with the credit card. Describe what's going on in the camps now. What is life like for the refugees? We have Azraq uh, camp, which is the new one that opened in April last year. Zatari, the famous camp, the one that everybody knows, has really calmed down now. I think people have realized they're not going back to Syria anytime soon. They're making the best of it. It's very close to the border of Syria, so they can actually hear sometimes what's going on in Syria. If there's a lot of fighting in southern Syria, you can hear the bombs exploding in uh, Zatari. And I know you said to me last year that many of them have this longing to go back to Syria. What is the reality of it now? That sadly, it still seems to be very much a dream at the moment. Um, people still want to go back. Neither the refugees or sadly the humanitarian workers like myself think it's going to be possible in the near future because there's just too many bad things going on in Syria at the moment. What kind of condition do the, the, the people who come through um, crossing from Syria to Jordan, what kind of condition are they in? We haven't yet seen people in really terrible physical condition. What we have seen is people in terrible mental condition, people who've been through things that no one should go through, particularly children. And I mean, I remember talking to one family that had arrived fairly recently, and I said to this 10-year-old boy, what made you come? Why did your family leave? And, he's, and he just looked at me and said, oh, it was the day the soldiers killed daddy and raped mummy. But he said it as if it was a completely normal daily event. So not only was it a terrible tragedy, for him it had actually become the regular way of life. And that's something that no child should have to say.